What's going on, YouTube? It's right here, right back at again with another episode of Off the Break. I'm joined yet again by Hypers, as always, my duo, my friend. Say what's up, guys. Compadre, what, what's up, guys? We are back for episode three, Trace. Of it Off should the be break. episode Talking five, but right. whatever. We'll get into that some other time. And we'll, we'll get back into consistency, guys. All right. <laughs> So, before we get into what we're going to talk about, which is obviously this coming weekend, is the CDL Atlanta event. I just want to stop for like one second and congratulate the Chicago Huntsman on winning the CDL London event last weekend. Let's get it to the Huntsman. Huntsman, big applause. Uh, we, Huntsman. Both, we, both, we both said that they were going to win. I, it was pretty obvious. Obviously, they were the best team going into the event. Uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, the Huntsmen were just pretty dominant fashion, especially against the Empire. They were just dominant in everything they did. Um, and there were definitely a couple, high, a lot more highlights ahead. So it was good to see them play. Um, Always yeah. remember, kids, lane is better than online. But I do love Dallas, yeah. though. All right. So before I actually, one more thing I do want to talk about real quick, before we get into all of the group play and who we're going to pick, like we usually talk about, I do want to talk about one thing, which is the changes to the competitive settings. There's been two changes that happen starting this past Monday, going into the event, it will take place, obviously, and that's Dom and S&D timers. Um, it was, for domination, it was six minutes per round, now it's down to five minutes, which is fine, and then S&D rounds are now reduced from two minutes per round to one and a half minutes. Hyper, do you think these are good or bad changes? Um, I think that for the Dom, it's it's definitely a lot better, because I think at, in terms of a viewer perspective, it those Dom games definitely took a long time to watch, and like, you, you could see like the good and the more like more gunfights and stuff but it, it was just too it took too long and when it comes to like production and stuff you know the series just take way too long so now you can fit more series in um so yeah i, I think that's a good change for the s and d i think it's gonna be very interesting since it went from two to a minute and a half so on a map like Arklov, you're just going to have to commit to a site and go with the strategy there. You probably won't be able to rotate. It's going to be a lot more fast-paced, which I do love. I there You're getting no debate, no arguments here. I was going to say the exact same thing almost word to word. I feel like six minutes of Dom made no sense in the first place. I mean, game three usually are always five minutes around. I don't know why they added the extra minute. Um, especially now with the neutralization of flags, I just feel like Five minutes is fine. I mean, a lot of Dom games seem to end two minutes into round two anyway because of mathematical impossibility. That's why Dom, in my opinion, isn't that much of a great competitive game mode in the first place, but that will be for another day. As for Search and Destroy, I'm going to I, I I'm gonna agree with you. However, I'm going to slightly play devil's advocate here as to probably the logic on why they had two minutes, and that's simple. It was dead silence. You know, people were sitting around waiting for their dead silence, and I feel like that's why they had it for two minutes instead of the one and a half. I'm okay with one and a half, obviously, but again, as, as Hyper already said, Arklov is going to be the most interesting map now for Search because you cannot rotate to the other bomb. You have to hard commit to a bomb, stack it. There's no more splitting up, you know, two, two, one. You have to just stack a bomb, have maybe one person play on an island, the other one, just in case to, to call for, like, for defense at least. But for offense, you have to hit it together. There's no time for nothing now because of that. And honestly, going back to the Dead Silence thing, it's gonna. I think it's gonna actually suck because dead silence. You know, you gotta wait for it sometimes. It's gonna be really struggling, especially on the offensive side. We're gonna see how it goes this weekend. But again, don't be surprised if people are complaining about offensive rounds being weird or losing because of not enough time to rotate or not enough time to do something. Or they 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 say screw the dead silence. I'm just gonna make a play, and then they probably die because they didn't have the dead silence to make said play. Yeah, it made sense because I th they they did up the the time. That you get dead silence, yeah. So it kind of coordinates with them, you know, reducing the time for S &D. and so And they also buffed tune up. They also did buff tune up yeah. recently, which is forty percent now. So you're gonna get dead silence even faster. Yeah. Like you can get dead silence like two times around now, but I still feel like it's still gonna be interesting. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's not like anything like CS:GO where you can you have time to coordinate strat and execute and stuff right. like that. So these rounds will go by, by very fast. And yeah, it's it's, it's, it's gonna be definitely. Yeah, definitely, but definitely good changes. Definitely good changes. All right, so we're going to get into it now, obviously. Again, I'm just going to quickly go over the format for people who don't understand it. It's two groups of four, two teams of each group. They play in like a mini miniature double elimination bracket until there's one or two teams left. Those two teams play each other in a one single elimination championship bracket. So for group B, we have Huntsman, Ultra, Minnesota Rock, Rocker, and Legion. Group A is Ravens, Mutineers, Phase, and Optic. 
for the first match of the weekend, we have the Minnesota Rocker versus the Paris Legion. Hyper, who do you got? Uh, man, this is this is a tough one. Um, I'm gonna go with the Minnesota Rockers. I think they're gonna have, you know, a, a good a good chance at this game compared to Paris Legion. The Paris Legion didn't look that great at London, so I'm gonna say, uh, that's that's gonna haunt them and it's it's gonna carry forward. So I'm gonna give it to the Minnesota Rocker here. I'm gonna agree with you on this one. Um, I still think Legion. They definitely showed you. I don't want to say I'm not gonna say they're flashing a pan or anything. I'm not gonna say they're like a one hit wonder, but I agree with you. They did not look, even though they got top four at London, they still didn't look as good as they did at Minnesota. Minnesota, they came out with the fire because they were tired of hearing about the power rankings. But Minnesota, to me, is and we both said before two weeks ago or a couple weeks ago in our, our first episode that they are the dark horse team of this whole league. They can beat anyone. I feel like teams that are above them or below them on the power rankings. I'm gonna go with Minnesota as well. All right, uh, and then the next match we have is the Ravens versus the Mutineers. Who do you think is going to win that game? <laughs> I know you're. I know who you're going to pick just because oh, yeah. you're you biased. Pick. You're biased, but I'm going to go with London because I just feel like they're just the better team. Weskins right now is probably one of the best players in the game. He has been nonstop passion playing this game f for a while. Like every day, he's on streaming. He's playing the CDL playlist by himself just, just by amping up his own personal thing. That's, that, that's all that playlist is about is just amping up your own personal like self-awareness and you know whatever timing for your own self in your brain. He's playing a lot of 10. He's playing like with you know friends of the like, GBs and whatever. And I just do think he's like one of the best players in the game right now, one of the best airs in the game. I think that they're just the better team. Sorry, I know you love Florida, but I'm going to go with London. You're ready now. I have to go with the Florida Mutineers, man. I, I'm so biased. I think Mutineers can. There's nothing it. wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. If there was a, if there was a Cleveland team, I would rock everything Cleveland. The I'd buy the pack on the game. I'd do everything. I'm definitely gonna get some Florida Mutineers merch. Don't worry about that. I'm thinking about getting a hat. I'm gonna rep my team, man. I love you. Buy that Mutineers. buy that hundred dollar hoodie like Jared did for Dallas. Oh, I, oh yeah, no, that's too much, man. Yeah, I know. <laughs> All right, <laughs> so the next match, it's gonna go back and forth. It's Group B, Group A, Group B, Group A. The next group of is Group B. It's the Chicago Huntsman versus Toronto Ultra. I'm, yeah, I'm just gonna say right now, Huntsman 3-0. Toronto's to me is just. A bottom two team, and I just think that the Huntsmen are just going to sweep them. Yeah, I think they're going to sweep them, but like we said the last episode, it, it's going to be interesting to see what lineup the Ultra do because I they switched it up from Minnesota. That they did. To London. That they so did. So we'll see if they switch it up again to that core Minnesota uh, roster that they had some decent success with. Um, but it's still going to be the Huntsman 3 out. I think that's the talent. Overall, on that team is just way superior to the Ultra. Yeah, I, I definitely agree 100%. Like I said, Toronto, uh, since day one, I've, uh, I just look at that roster on paper. As much as I love Looney, I think he's a, you know, I think he's an underrated player. I mean, he's not the best player, but he's, I feel like he's a smart player. He knows what he's doing. He's a good veteran leader. But that team just makes no sense. And, again, like you just said, and we both said that that was going to happen, that they just switched mid-matches. Mid they were switching teammates in the middle of the tournament. Like they switched bands with S&D or whatever, and just it didn't really work. And I just feel like Chicago's just the better team. And last but not least, we have Atlanta Phase, the home team, versus Optic Game in Los Angeles. Hyper, who do you have? The Mountain Dew Amp GameCube marquee match at 3 o'clock. Right. Oh, yeah. I'm hold on, hold on. Three, there's man. the can, baby. Yeah, there's, the can. <laughs> there's the can. The shameless <laughs> plug. Please sponsor this show, plug. Mountain Dew. We've already had one conversation before. Let's have another one. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I think it's clear. It's pretty biased. We're going to go with the Atlanta Phase here. Uh, they had they have the home crowd. They're number one in the power ranking. Those those guys are just they're young. They're eager. They they have you know they have the skills. They're fast. So it's gonna go to Atlanta Phase three zero. One word, simp. <laughs> There's nothing <laughs> simp the pimp. Uh, I don't think it'll be a I don't think it'll be a three zero. I do think Phase will win. I I. I still am so iffy about Optic. I've been saying this for a while now. And I'm going to go on a limb here. All right? I'm going to go on a limb here. Optic Gaming is going to lose the phase. But Optic Gaming, somehow, some way, is going to make it out of group play and make it into the championship bracket. Ooh. That's my hot take of this episode. 
Yeah, well, because when you look on this at this roster on paper, because it, it just it makes a lot of sense. Like the, they can, I know they have the potential, they have the talent. So, mm -hmm. uh, it, I I could see it. Yeah, I, I could definitely see them make I, a run. What I and I've said this before, and I'm gonna say it again. I know everyone is hating on optic right now because the whole thing behind the scenes. But when you look at that roster on paper. They're going to win. Once they figure it out, whatever problems they have, once they figure it out, once they start to click, they're going to win a tournament sometime by the end of the season. And I just, again, by looking at just the bracket, Optic's probably going to have to play, um, like I said, they're probably going to have to play either the Mutineers or the Ravens. I feel like Optic, they have the talent to beat both of those teams in the loser's bracket or whatever to make it out of the group play. That's the, that's my hot take. I just feel like Optic's going to make it out. Hyper, who do you think's going to make it out of group A? You, do you agree with me, or do you think mm. it's going to be someone else with FaZe? No, I, I, I completely agree with you on everything you just said, pretty much, to the T. All right. Who do you think's going to get out of group B? Who's like, we, got, we both got Chicago, but who do you think's going to go with them? Uh... Man. Minnesota, Paris, or Toronto? Uh, man, I, I'm going to have to go with Minnesota. They're just a lot more balanced and they have a lot more potential. So Same. Uh, I, th I think... I really am I like. I really am a fan of that team. I really am. I don't know what it is about them. Like I said, I just, they're the dark horse team of this whole league. They, they, I feel like they're going to make a lot of noise. Will they win a tournament this year? I don't know. As of right now, I don't want to say yes or no, but I do feel like from all the scrims I've watched, they, they stomp on all the teams that are under them in the power rankings and the three or four teams above them, like New York and you know Chicago, Dallas, and Atlanta, they've taken games off of them and even a series off of them probably. I don't know. Maybe, I don't want to say series, but like at least games off of them. So they, they have the potential to win against the best. And, of course, they're stomping on the worst. I wouldn't be surprised. So I agree with you. I think Minnesota is going to uh, take it. Or get take it out of group play, I should say. Yeah, they'll yeah they'll get they'll they'll, they'll be out of group play. I I can see it. All right, one last question before we wrap this here up. Who's winning CDL Atlanta? Oh man, I I think we know it's gonna be. It, it's possible, right? The Huntsman versus Phase. They're the only way that they play each other is if they play if. Is championship bracket. They can't play in group play. They have yeah. to play in championship bracket, whether it be first round or the finals. Yeah, I think they're. Um, let's be honest. When it comes to these two teams, it's gonna be they're gonna be the finals. And yeah, it's gonna be a real exciting. That's, that's gonna, gonna be, be one good. of the most viewed finals that Sunday. Because oh, yeah. that's number one versus number two. We all want to see it. Everybody wants to see it. They haven't yeah. played each other in LAN nope. yet. So they have not played each other. They're um, the only. They're the yeah. only. I think they're like one of the few teams who have yet to play each other. Yeah. So. Um, I'm gonna give it to FaZe. I think they're gonna win this. They're gonna take their own home series. Uh, they already told the world that they're number one. So I, I just think they're gonna solidify it and put Huntsman in that number two spot. This is tough for me because everyone knows that I am Green Wall till I die. I was an Optic fan back then, Chicago fan now. I I I don't know who's gonna win. I I just I want to bite my nails. I don't have nails. I cut my nails already. I want to be like, I don't know. This is a tough one for me because, again, I, I, I bias the aside, of course. I know that FaZe is probably the better team. But they've already, like, this is the first, like, land event for the FaZe team. And Chicago just came off of winning their, you know, the last event. And I feel like it really could go either way. I wouldn't be surprised if... You know, the Huntsman won, but at the same time, I wouldn't be surprised if Atlanta won. I, I, I don't really know who to pick. I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to lean a little, a little bit towards phase, mm -hmm. but it's it's tough. It is a tough one. But I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick phase. I'll just pick phase. Screw it. We'll just pick phase. We'll roll it phase. If I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But, I mm -hmm. again, the Huntsman, I feel like they're more proven. They have way more land experience. I know Simp is a monster. But Major Maniac, I feel like, is going to be the factor there in Celium because those two, it's just like, on land, what are you going to get from them especially? Because you know what you're going to get from Simp, obviously. Yeah. You know what you're going to get yeah. from Priest, obviously. It's in Abizi, obviously, because they're all champions, whereas Major Maniac does not have a major win. 
where Stellium does not technically have a major win. So it's like, will they show up on Championship Sunday? We'll find out this weekend. Yeah, think be said for Huntsman. You're going to look at players like Envoy. He definitely proved himself at London. He should have been MVP. Place. Actually, let's yeah, talk about I that real quick. Let's, let's talk about that. Okay, well, never mind. We're not going to talk about that. I feel like he should have been MVP. I know Scumpy had a 2 point whatever one seven KD in Search and Destroy, and Scumpy probably should. He could have been MVP, obviously, but Envoy, to me, was the MVP of the last event, 100%. Yeah, I thought so too. Like he that had guy, a game, I think on Saint Petro. Yeah, Saint Petro hard point. He was like, like no, no, he, no, it wasn't thirty one. It was like thirty seven. He was almost tr almost yeah. triple positive with three minutes in the hill. <laughs> like, what is this guy doing? He is a freak. Yeah, so I think you're gonna look at Envoy for the Huntsman if he can pop off and he can stop this phase roster. Yeah, along with our cities. Yeah, I think they have a solid chance. Yeah, like, they, I think I, it's gonna go to a game five. Man, no I'm looking. I'm, I'm looking at this shirt, five. man. I'm looking at this shirt. I want to change my pick. I'm. I'm not going to. But I. We're just. We're just. Uh, we're just rocking it, boys. Yeah, it's. It's gonna be oh, a fun final. It's, fi it's gonna be a fun final. It's gonna be a fun final. But that's pretty much it. We're gonna wrap this up. This episode. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Let us know in the comments below. If you got yeah, for your picks, if you if we're wrong, let us know. If you want to pick someone else to win or lose, let us know. If you're a Toronto Ultra fan for some reason, let us know that we're idiots. I don't know, but we're gonna have this video up. Oh. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Follow him on all his social medias. What are those social medias? This is at Hepper J on whatever social media. On everything, and of course, you guys know mine. It's gonna be in the link in the description below. We'll see you guys probably Monday and give you the results. Peace.